If you've been around the gaming sector for a good amount of years, probably at some point or another, you've heard of the Shadowgate franchise. Over the years, it's appeared in a lot of different various iterations, and today we're going to be taking a look at Shadowgate VR The Minds of Mythrock, which is book one in what will end up being a series of VR installments. At its core, Shadowgate, in whatever various incarnations it's lived in over the years, are puzzle-based exploration games. Typically, there's a slight bit of backstory you get at the very beginning, but in short order, you're thrown into a dungeon or a castle type environment, and you're off to the races to puzzle your way to victory. The puzzles feel very real to the environments, and they feel like they have a reason to exist there. This goes a long way in immersing you into this VR world, and that you're working your way through. In this particular installment, you'll get a little bit more story and lore as you're going through the game. You'll find some recordings on little discs to play back. More news. I believe that Fergren has unleashed something hidden here a millennia ago. At least this is what the Blue Seer stones tell me. But for the most part, the story is going to be found in the environment and the interactions with your companion, Raven Odin. Oh, I see. Petting me makes you feel better. Sure, go for it. He will throw many insults your way. I have heard that even great sorcerers know when to call for aid. That's a hint, by the way. But he's also essential to the game progression and gameplay mechanics, in that you can possess his view to where he will reveal hidden items and spots in the environment that you wouldn't be able to see otherwise. He also serves as a kind of organic and natural feeling built-in hint system. Companions share with each other. Do you have anything to share with me? No. Then how about I share with you? Want a hint? If you talk to him once, you will get a very broad hint to your current situation. The door that will lead you from this prison is locked. You will need a key. Ask him again, and he'll get a bit more specific, and then ask him a third time, and you're going to be led very close, if not all the way to the solution to the puzzle that's currently holding you up in your progression. This feels natural, and again, it adds a lot to the overall character of the experience. As for the puzzles themselves, while challenging, I found them overall to be very reasonable, and aside from perhaps one or two moments later in the game that felt a little bit iffy as far as figuring out without diving into the built-in hint system, the difficulty felt just about right. The puzzles and solutions were almost always very unique. You didn't find repeats of the type of things you had to do. Yes, there is a number of puzzles where you have to use runes in some way or another, but they were used and integrated in unique ways. And almost always the solution is, for the most part, put right in front of you or right around you, and you just need to really take your time, observe and look around, and then try and go about figuring it out. Oftentimes you'll need to chain together some successes to arrive at a larger goal, say to land a key or a lever to access a new location. But for the most part, you're very rarely left completely unaware of what you need to do. There is some combat to be found and you get to use your wand against spiders and bats and other what you would consider typical dungeon baddies. Not at all central to the game, and really, the game doesn't really need these combat situations to succeed, though it doesn't hurt the experience at all either. And at the very least, it provides a bit of variety to the mostly puzzle-solving gameplay. If you're feeling a bit overwhelmed or want to tailor the experience, there is plenty of options, and I mean a lot of options, for gameplay, comfort, and overall a tailored experience. You'll find things like difficulty settings for easy, normal, and hard, which will adjust the overall difficulty of combat, puzzles as a whole, and other options. And even very tailored things, like if you happen to be an arachnophobe and spiders would just ruin you being able to enjoy this experience, there's even a setting where you can make spiders look silly or less intimidating as you do encounter some small and big ones along your journey. Most players will likely find themselves using a hybrid approach of teleportation and free locomotion to fine tune their position. And everything else like grabbing your wand and shield from your holsters by your hips works just as you'd expect. And traversal of occasional ropes, stairs, and ledges mostly, and I say that with an emphasis on mostly, works without hitch. Your main means of interacting with the world comes by means of your wand, which again you can holster and quickly retrieve from the side of your choosing. As time goes on you also receive a shield. 
but true to wizardly ways, they keep the usage of your wand fun and often used. Exploration is a huge part of the fun, and it is also rewarded. So if you take your time, you'll often find extra chests and areas with gold and other loot in them. Things like potions heal your life if, like me, you happen to make mistakes and walk over some traps from time to time. And you'll find other boosts. And of course, gold in any dungeon or castle is in fair abundance. But as far as usefulness, it's mostly limited to cosmetic upgrades to things like the look of your wand and Odin, your raven companion. The game is available on Windows through the Oculus app, as well as on the Quest Store. And since it's a cross by title, you only have to purchase the game once, and then you can play it on either. The graphical fidelity is noticeably higher on the PC, so if you happen to have access to both, you might as well play it on the PC. But either way, you're going to have an immersive and very fun experience. Now, while clearly there's a whole lot I loved about this game, there are definitely some things that I found difficult to deal with, and even harder here in this review to score, mainly because it was pretty obvious they were all conscious design decisions by the creators, and do fit directly with the lineage of the Shadowgate universe and style of gameplay they're trying to recreate in this VR setting. In Shadowgate, they've nicely and seamlessly integrated some save game panels that you walk over, pause for a moment, and then boom, your progress is saved at that spot. If things don't go well and you die, a couple of seconds later you reappear back at that spot and you're free to jump back in. There are a number of times though where you may find yourself having to replay through decent chunks of areas, traps, and annoyances repeatedly to where it either starts to feel like difficulty spike time padding for the game's length or where you feel your enjoyment of the overall experience starting to diminish. Save game frustrations aside, and really that's my biggest complaint probably, I only had a few other mechanics or sections I didn't particularly enjoy, or at least in some way. For instance, I loved the minecart sections. It felt almost like a Disneyland ride or a theme park. But again, the lack of a regular autosave mode in those sections started to feel like redundant exercise of memorization and repetition that quickly lost their thrill until I finally made it to the end of each section, often starting over a good chunk of time with each attempt. There are a couple of VR mechanics that didn't feel perfectly polished, at least for me, such as the climbing sections. There's one where I actually kept falling to my doom, despite keeping my grips on the VR controllers held down very solidly, and every time I fell, I instantly died, regardless of the difficulty I had it on, and needed to keep loading back a very long section, walk all the way back, just to find myself falling to my doom over and over again, and admittedly, it really got annoying until I couldn't take it anymore. But I do have to note that things like this didn't seem to be regular problems for other players. I think I have to chalk this up to me doing something wrong with mechanics, even though it's not something I've run into in other games. There is a lot to enjoy here, and being a longtime PC gamer, at times I absolutely adored Shadowgate and the nostalgic genre throwback experience it created for me in VR, and especially with all of the added medium-specific magic it's capable of providing. Especially considering that this is book one of a larger experience, slight tweaks to the formula can continue to be made over time in later installments. And with that, I'm extremely eager to see this story continued in the future. Smooth like butter, eh?